Dear student, future colleague, welcome back to my channel. And for those who are new here, I am Dr. Teresa, a general practitioner that once was walking in the exact same shoes as yours. Looking for a solution to your knowledge tasks, you came here as same as I did few years ago. That's why I decided to produce the educational material you need to become a doctor all in one place. If you find this channel helpful, please make sure to subscribe to support me. In this video, we are going to learn about the potential ectopic pacemakers of the heart. Let's recap briefly. The parts of the heart's electrical conduction system are the SA node or the sinoatrial node followed by the conducting branches for the atria. Then comes the AV node or the atrioventricular node. Then comes the bundle of his immediately bifurcating into right and left bundle branches. And at the end, there are subdivisions, the Purkinje fibers. Normally, the electrical activity of the heart originates in the SA node. This is the heart's dominant pacemaker. This stimulus generated at the SA node spreads away in all directions and travels down through the conduction pathways for the atria to reach all of the myocytes of the atria. This stimulus is going to depolarize the atria and will give a deflection on ACG named AP wave. The next stop is the AV node the only normal conducting pathway between the atria and the ventricles. The SA node and the AV node are connected with conducting pathways called the internodal pathways. The electrical stimulus generated at the SA node travels down through these pathways to reach the AV node. After the AV node comes the ventricular conduction system. The ventricular conduction system originates at the His bundle, then immediately bifurcates into the right and left bundle branches and they divide into tiny subdivisions. This stimulus is going to depolarize the ventricles and will provide the QRS complex on the ACG. The last thing we see on a regular pattern is the T wave. The T wave represents the final phase of the repolarization of the ventricles. With all of this, we have covered the normal cardiac cycle. Now, normally, the SA node is the dominant pacemaker, but every part of the electrical conduction system has foci that can generate electrical stimuli on its own, known as automaticity foci. When the focus above functions properly, all of the others foci below are suppressed and they are asleep. The nature was very smart to produce a backup plan, a backup mechanism when the dominant pacemaker fails to lead the heart. There are three separate levels for this backup pacemaker mechanism. Those are the atrial, the junctional and the ventricular level. When the previously dominant leader stops working, another automaticity focus, not longer overdrive suppressed, wakes up from its sleepy still phase to start pacing and to save the person's life. If the highest automaticity focus fails to work, an automaticity focus from the next highest level, no longer overdrive suppressed, wakes up and starts to pace as a dominant. So if the SA node fails to produce a stimulus, a focus below in the atria will wake up and will take over the dominance. If that one too fails to work, another focus below in the atria will take over the job. And if all of the atrial foci fail to work, then junctional foci come up to the front. Now, if all junctional foci 
fail to produce a stimulus than a focus lower from them, a focus from the ventricles comes up in the front to save the situation. Amazing, right? All of this explained till now will make much more sense when you learn about the escape beats and escape rhythms. When we talk about escape beats, we refer to the point where the dominant pacemaker stops to work for a short period of time. Then a backup automaticity focus wakes up to pace and produce a beat. But the original leader restores its work again and becomes dominant again. That's why on ACG we will only see one bit that we call the escape bit. And when we talk about escape rhythms, we refer to the point where the dominant pacemaker stops working completely. So now the automaticity focus from below should assume the role of a guide of the heart and needs to become dominant. The original leader in this situation doesn't restore its work. So the heart is led by another automaticity focus. In another situations, these foci may become irritated. We call them irritable foci. In that case, they may start to fire impulses at a higher rate and cause tachyarrhythmias, or may start to work and fire impulses independently, imitating dominance, while the dominant pacemaker still fires impulses regularly. So at the same time, two or more foci act like dominant. What a chaos, right? And yes, they produce a chaos. When we talk about this situation, we refer to the premature beats, tachyarrhythmias, flutter, and fibrillations. More about this topic in another video, where I explain all of the arrhythmias in detail. And with that, I would like to end this video. I hope that you find it helpful, and if yes, please make sure to subscribe to support me. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.